temperatures and they've made their way yeah. uh, to Minneapolis and, and St. Paul. So there you go. All right, my friend, we get a run. I yeah. know you do too. And I, uh, I say hello to Puck. Uh, as we'll, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. I right. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, our next guest comes to us uh, from Seattle, WA. And, uh, of course, he uh, usually is our final guest of the day. But in our uh, new, at least temporary schedule, we wanted to lead him off. And uh, he leads us off today. He is the uh, executive director of Democracy Watch News, the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. He's Mark Taylor Canfield. And he joins us from Seattle, Washington. Mr. MTC, how are you, my man? Mama, she done told me, Papa done told me to. Boy, that girl you're hanging with, well, she ain't no good for you. But that's all right. That's all right. That's all right now, Mama. Any way that you want to do. Woohoo! MTC is in the house. How are you hey, doing, Jeff. my man? Oh, man, it's the life of a journalist and a singer in a rock and roll band. I never get any sleep. There's always another gig. There's always another uh, breaking news story. And I should start right off with this is World Press Freedom Day on May 3rd. So big story coming out of this country. Reporters Without Borders just released their new World Press Freedom Index. And the United States is now ranked, get this, 45th in the world now in terms of press freedom yeah, so, so there are now 45 so or 44 other countries that have more press freedom and where it's easier for our journals to do their job than the united states and this is the bad news too is that um not that that's not bad news because we we have had a steady decline since 2002 when we were number 17 last year we were 42nd now we're 45th the thing is is that around the world it's been one of the worst years ever for journalists jeff i mean there's 563 journalists and media workers in prison right now around the world. Seven, uh, six journalists and one media worker have been killed since January 1st. So this has been a really bad year for journalists. And this is what happened. I was registered for a conference where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was speaking. It was the event where Reporters Without Borders was releasing the new 2023 World Press Freedom Index report. And guess what happened uh, when he was up on the stage? Medea Benjamin from Code Pink comes running up with a sign saying, free Julian Assange, and says, hey, we can't let this day go by without mentioning the fact that there's a whistleblower in yeah, jail right now in the UK waiting for extradition. So she interrupted the, the uh, US Secretary of State's speech. And that I'm writing about that, by the way, at Truth Out. So that article should be out either sometime this weekend or on Monday. And then I also wrote an article at Daily Coast and want to democracy watch news about it. So I have been super busy, Jeff. It's been a crazy week with a major conference in New York at the United Nations with dignitaries from all over the world. And then also uh, the World Press Freedom Day, uh, World Press Freedom Index uh, presentation that by Reporters Without Borders. That was actually sponsored by the Washington Post where Medea Benjamin did her protest. But hey, like I said in my article at Daily Coast, what a perfect time to do it. It's World Press Freedom Day. Eyes of the world are, are on that event. Everybody's waiting for those new rankings to come out. And there she is on stage. They cut her mic, but it was obvious from her sign and what, what we did hear her say that she was demanding the release of Julian Assange. Yeah. Uh, a whistleblower. Do you think it's going to happen? Let me ask a, you this, Mark. What do you think about that? Is it, re is it realistically, is this something that could happen? Well, there is some pressure to, to make that happen, but there are, there's also a lot of what I find sort of knee jerk back. Uh, uh, reactions to it from people who you know think he's a shill for the russians or something so uh they're yeah. still mad at him for for uh, being you know anti-hillary clinton and you know there's some strong feelings out there even among the democrats on this issue jeff believe me i had an earful of this all day yesterday so i know what i'm talking about there's some very strong feelings so i cannot predict one way or another the there was a decision in the uk where a judge ruled that he could not be extradited at this point and part of that is because uh, uh, because she's afraid, you know, that he might do something crazy to keep from being extradited. So she's, you know, telling his saying that his mental health is, is not up to it. So we'll see what happens. All I know is that whistleblowers are an important part of what being a journalist is about. That's where some of our anonymous sources come comes from. Uh, Assange was working with the New York Times and other major media when he released that information. So it's not as if, you know, he was some kid in you know, in nowhere land. But um, 
I, I cannot predict whether that's going to happen or not. I think the main problem that I have is that the U.S. media is still not reporting on the fact that we're ranked 45th in the world in terms of press freedom. And until that changes, Jeff, I got some work to do because I've been lobbying well, everybody. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, and many others, uh, Mark. And, and I think that this connects to, you know, the, uh, the issue that's along the border. And by the way, happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, you know, the, the celebration of that, you know, is, is the freedom, uh, you know, from France and the battle waged, you know, back in 1862. Now, the interesting thing about this, it, to me, what's going on right now, not so much the battle of 1862, is that we're dealing with human rights. What's happening to journalists around this country, including Assange, is human rights. You know, you're, you're, you're arresting people, you're detaining them, you're putting them on death row. I, you know, I mean, this is something to me that, you know, is, is just outrageous. Yet there seems to be very little discussion of this uh, in, in mainstream media. In fact, if you even think about it to another extent, is, issues to help working class Americans uh, is also being taken off of media. What do we hear about, you know, Bernie Sanders' call for a 32-hour work week or a $17 an hour minimum wage? It's radio silence. It's television silence. And that's where we're at. So you wrap up your issue that you care so much about and have written and worked on so long, you know, in connection with all the other things that I just mentioned here. And this is where we are in 2023. So press freedom goes along with human rights, goes along what's happening at the border and what's happening, you know, in terms of how we view our countries and what we value in democracies uh, particularly in Central America, and that unfortunately is is uh, non-existent, even from Democrats. And what is happening in Honduras, and what is happening in, in El Salvador and Nicaragua, and so forth, it does not make the headline news, and therefore it is not on the uh, you know agenda of the president or any any mainstream Democrat for that matter. And this this is problematic because those people, <clears throat> you know, they they basically have to survive. And, and, and bow down to dictators and gangs that are, you know, relevant in their, in their communities, in their villages. <clears throat> and they don't, they don't have any other access but to, to leave their country, risk their lives, go across the Rio Grande to try to make it here in America, which is not exactly a welcoming land. And it's been this way for a while. Your thoughts, my friend, because I think you tie all these things together and it, and it just goes to show you where we're at in, in this, how... We treat others, Americans and others around the world. Yeah, well, one of the things that Reporters Without Borders has about the United States is this ill will and, and ill feeling towards journalists because there's a lot of online, har online harassment that goes on, especially against women and people of color. It's been a it's not been a great year to be a journalist in the United States, even with Trump out of office. It's still been tough. Uh, you have these massive media monopolies, you know, which squeeze out any kind of independent or diverse political spectrum. So forget that. The mainstream is always going to be a, a sort of corporate uh, agenda, corporate interest sort of agenda, as long as the corporate media is controlling everything. And as long as you have, you know, uh, TV networks owning, you know, 280 radio or TV stations or having 280 affiliates around the country and owning like 30, 40 radios and TV stations. So... Uh, that I goes back to the FCC, as I've talked about before. I did get a chance to talk to uh, Mark Pocan about this. Now, he was interested, although not as, as well informed as I would have hoped, but that's typical <laughs> for most public officials in the United yeah. States and people in the media. Uh, I did talk to Pramila Jayapal. I met with her staff, and then I also met with her individually, and we talked about all of this, and there are some legislative um, remedies for this. And I'm writing about that in my article at Truth Out, working really hard with the editors to make sure we get everything right. And then it's a great article. But um, I talk about uh, the uh, Journalism uh, Competition and Preservation Act, which is something that uh, is very important. It's something that Amy Klobuchar um, actually introduced into the Senate. And that's a really important bill that would help uh, smaller independent newspapers and family operated newspapers and other news organizations to collectively bargain, basically, to get together as one entity and um, negotiate with the huge tech giants, Google and Facebook, who are eating up all of the revenue right now. And that's why a lot of newspapers are going under. 360 
Newspapers have closed their doors since 2019, according to Reporters Without Borders in this new report for 2023. So that's a major problem. Yeah, so a lot of one newspaper towns and a lot of smaller towns and mid-sized communities have no newspapers at all anymore. At all. So they get all of their news from Fox or, you know, ABC yeah, or CS you know, or whatever. And, and thank God there's some it. there's some individual websites. I know that there is here in the South Coast, but it is um, it is really, really sad to see the demise in a lot of mid-cities. You know, I mean, yeah, the Bostons and yeah. the New Yorks and the Chicagos will always have their newspapers. But, um, you know, what about, uh, you know, a smaller city or a smaller town? Boston. And, uh, there you go. There's uh, the great city of Boston. It's right. You know, uh, what? so, yeah, uh, it's, there is some other legislation, though, that people should know about. There's also J Jamie Raskin. His press act really needs to be reintroduced into the House. It actually passed the House last time around last session, but it didn't get voted on in the Senate. Uh, there are several other uh, tax incentives and other things for small independent newspapers that that are, um, some Congress uh, members of Congress have been working on trying to get through the, the particular committees and get them introduced as legislation. So, hey, there are some uh, legislative remedies that people uh, could, should take a look at and that media representatives, I guess, should get behind and really promote because we want to see the Press Act. We want to see this anti slap um, act by Jamie Raskin also, which has been in introduced this year already. Um, and it would save a lot of uh, journalists from, you know, unproductive and punitive lawsuits to try to shut them up, which is what happens, you know, with these um, with these lawsuits that are meant to, to, you know, stifle the dialogue. So those are two great pieces, the Press Act and the Anti-SLAPP Act. Jamie Raskin rocks on this issue. He's one of the few members of Congress. Uh, Jayapal also is a co-sponsor of the Press Act. So, you know, she's all for it. I think what she would like to do, Jeff, is just break up the media monopolies. And I'm so excited about that idea. Antitrust laws. Where's Teddy Roosevelt when we need him, right? I mean, come on. These corporations, <laughs> they own all of the media now. Yes, And uh, exactly. nobody's talking about it. Nobody's trying to do anything about it because they're all getting campaign <laughs> well, contributions, apparently. This is, this is, this is the, the important part. And CNN goes ahead and gives Donald Trump a, a free hour on Wednesday night. Uh, this, to me, is a disgusting part of corporate media. And it's something that cannot continue to have when you have uh, people who are basically felons, um, you know, being able to sort of give an hour by a, a top media outlet. And we just have a minute or so left here. Do you think uh, your Seattle Kraken are going to make it to the next round? They got a 1-1, uh, winning the game in Dallas, losing last night. They come back home. Uh, it's amazing what you guys have done, and, and you're only your second year of uh, existence. Yeah, actually, the Seahawks get some great draft picks, too. So we can talk about that maybe next time with Charbonnet as a, as a second round runner and stuff. We have a great running team this year. But uh, yeah, the Kraken are just breaking out. I mean, they had a hard time last night with Dallas. <laughs> it was kind of rough, but they're coming home and they do great at home, although they do really well on the road as well. So uh, I, yeah, everybody's kind of astounded that they... Yeah, I think they can do it, but people are kind of astounded here in Seattle. We're just like watching every game like it's game nine of the World Series. We're just into it, you know. So all the bars are full, people watching cracking games. The, the uh, Climate Pledge Arena is full when they play. Everybody in the media is talking about it. You see their, their paraphernalia and gear everywhere. And you can see my stuff at YouTube. Go check out my song called Mother Freedom. Check it out. MTC, man. He's on the scene on so many fronts. Mark, great to see you, my man. We'll talk to you next week. I'm not sure what Thanks, day, Jeff. We'll Have a great weekend. Love you guys. All the best, my man. You too. Go Kraken. We'll be right back, folks. Our good friend John Shelton will join us. He from the other place that begins with W, Wisconsin. Green Bay, that is. We'll be right back. <laughs>